Matthew chapter 14. At that time, all what we've been reading, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus. So Jesus is getting out there. The word is getting out. And said unto his servants, this is Herod, this is John the Baptist. Okay, so the word hasn't got out very long. Because John the Baptist, we're going to read the story, he's going to die. He is risen from the dead. So here's a Roman who believes in resurrection. Maybe with a little chocolate bunny or something. That's always wonder how you, when you get the chocolate bunny, you always eat the head off first. I'm sorry. And therefore, <clears throat> excuse me, and therefore mighty works do show for themselves in him. So the Pharisees are saying Satan is doing the works through Jesus. Herod the Roman is saying John the Baptist is doing the works. What a big difference. For Herod had laid hold on John the Baptist and, be, and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. I'm just trying to read a note here. No, over here, I don't know what it is. And John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. John steps up the place and said, That's sin. And when he would have put him to death, death sentence, was saying, It's not your wife. He feared the multitude, he's a people fearer, because they count him as a prophet. He was a prophet. One of the best prophets, one of the best men Jesus said has ever been born. But when Herod's birthday, happy birthday to you, always with death in the Bible, birthday. Birthday is the day you're born. How do you get born over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? Job and Jeremiah cursed the day they were born. Pharaoh had a birthday and someone hung by the neck. Was kept. The daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Genesis 4.20 He did a little belly dancing. I'm just reading daughter like mother when you read when we get to the other, the other gospels it even gets grosser <clears throat> so she's doing her little belly dancing for step papa and all his crew where do you see that how many daughters of presidents have gotten up and do a little belly dance for all the delegates in all the world I mean, yep, she did. She went, I'm not, you're not going to show me off. I'm not a piece of flesh. This girl's a piece of flesh. Where he had promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Wow. And she being before instructed of her mother. So this was all planned out. You get yourself a nice little bikini and start doing your little dancey there. And that that pervert is going to want you and when he opens up his mouth you become a whore and give your price did, did I change the Bible a little bit that's exactly what happened be instructed before her mother said give me here John Baptist head in a charger here Jesus said upon this rock you bring that head right here where we're talking, dear. You got to watch out for some mothers. And the king was sorry. Sorry for what? 
Do you let this woman rule your, your castle? Your, this is a Jezebel. Oh, honey, why are you crying? Why are you sucking your thumb in bed? Oh, I can't get the I can't get the vineyard and I don't really want it. Well, aren't you the king of the whole kingdom? Just stay in bed. Let me go handle it. And what happened? Then a man die. History repeats itself if you don't study history. If Herod were to study the Bible, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is getting to sound a little awfully familiar. So we know who ruled the Bruce in the Roman kingdom. That's why when, when, when a female for her husband dangles the marriage bed in front of him to get whatever, it's wrong. Don't worry, dear. I know how to take care of your father. He'll say yes. That's wrong. That's biblically wrong. King was sorry, nevertheless, for an oath's sake. Well, at least he's bound by his oath. But to produce a dead, innocent man? And then that sat with him at me. Oh, sure, you don't want to have to, 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 to break our humility and pride and bring ourselves low to say I did something wrong. But just because all the people are here at my birthday party, it's my party and I can kill somebody if I want to. I'm not going to tell this tramp, you know what? You and your mother need to pack your bags for that little thing you want and get out of my kingdom. I ain't going to kill nobody. How about that? This girl doesn't even give a time out. The innocent guy dies. He commanded it to be given her. He could have rebuked her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. I wonder if John knew why. What did John know? And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. Look at that. Here's a head bleeding. Dead. Here, Mom. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard it, he departed thence by ship into a desert. Now, go to verse 19, says, on the grass. So this is not, you know, sandy desert area. It can be grass. It can be a nice area. Went to a desert place apart. When the people heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. Now the disciples, are, they want to, you know what? One of our men just got killed. We want to be left alone. We'll go off a little quiet time. And Jesus is like, let's go. Well, here comes a group of the people. And you can, you can read that. Because when you can read what happens here, the disciples are like, you know, they're getting sick of these people. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick. So Jesus has compassion. And when it was evening, about six o'clock Jewish time, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place. The time is now past. Send the multitude away. Get rid of them. We don't want them around. That they may go to the villages. Oh yeah, that they may go to the villages and buy themselves victuals. You know, they're hungry. Send them away, Lord. But Jesus said, Jesus is going to ruin their little plan. Jesus said, to them, they need not depart. Oh, give them, give them to eat. <laughs> and they said to him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. We can't do it. We don't want to do it. He said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. I have a note here, Psalms 23 too, about the shepherd leading the sheep, making them lie down. 
green bastards, and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brank and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Now notice that Jesus take, takes the food from the disciples. He gives thanks to the Father. He returns it to the disciples, and the disciples give it to the people. And they did all eat and were filled. They took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. Now, have you ever read this story and just wondered how on earth did that happen? Can you just imagine Peter? Wait a minute. I have fed eight groups of people and I still got more. That one fat Jew over there, man, he just wants more and more and more and more. And, and then they all gather up 12 baskets. It's like, how did it happen? And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. That's the miracle of God. We read earlier, you know, God will take care of you. Don't worry about your food or raiment. He's taking care of them. He's trying now to reach out to them again. These people are coming to hear Jesus. They were not expecting a meal. They were not expecting anything but to hear from Jesus. And they end up getting fed miraculously. Now this is where the little boy brings his two fishies to Jesus and gives them up. Imagine he's got a fish tail to tell his mom and dad when he gets home. I wonder if they ever believed the little boy. If he ever got spanked for telling a lie. Parents could have been. Well, it says the little boy he could have been there. But. I can't fathom five loaves of bread and then you're picking up 12 baskets full. Can't, I can't fathom that. I can't even grasp that moment. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. He's going to send them off again. They're on the run. They're on the going. They're going, 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 going. There is no rest. Calvary's coming. There's no rest. The Lord is coming. This is not the time to lay down and relax. Get going. But one of our brothers just died and, and, and beheaded. There's masses of people who are going to listen. Keep going. All right, Lord, we fed them. We gave them something to eat. Get in that ship and get moving. Keep going. Calvary's coming. And constrain his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him onto the other side. So leave without Jesus while he sent the multitudes away. We don't even know what happened. How did he do it? Did he talk to them? Did he bless them? He sends the disciples off. The disciples are not present as Jesus dismissed the, the crew. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And just reading some notes here. I can't read no more. Too small. But when the ship was now in the midst of the sea, so they're out on the sea, in the middle of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Here comes another storm. And the fourth watch of the night, and I had that note, that's in another gospel. Jesus walked upon walk Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Now some people will say that it was on ice. In waves. Jesus turned water to wine, did did he drink it? And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. I'd be troubled too. 
saying it is a spirit. My question for God, are there spirits out there? The disciples sure believed in them. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Here I come. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. When Peter was come down out of the ship. So when he come down out of the ship, the ship is, is a huge ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. He's trusting and believing. The disciples were there in the boat and only one man stepped out. Oh, Peter lost his faith. At least Peter had enough faith to take the step and go. Jesus is outside the boat. And Peter's like, this is the wrong place for me to be. I want to be with you, Lord. Even that is to be on the, on the water. Let's go. You know, everyone says, get in the boat with Jesus. Jesus is not in the boat. Peter's like, okay, let me go where you are, Lord. Are you willing to take that step? And get out of solid ground to walk on something you're not made to walk on? No man has ever, ever to this time and has never, ever walked on water. But when he saw the wind boisterous, that is stormy, he was afraid. Storms of life come. Get afraid. He beginning to sink, he cried, saying, This is the greatest prayer. Lord, save me. That's the greatest three-word prayer in the Bible. When you're in trouble, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? Wait a minute, he's the one that stepped out. No one else did. You could have made it all the way to me, Peter. You didn't have to sink. Why'd you put your eyes on the storm and not me? Why did you let circumstance? And I, I fall in that category. I can't post faith on my walls and be honest about it. I've lost my faith many times. I'm human. Many times the Lord would say to me, Thou little faith, why would you lose your faith? Storms, troubles, circumstances. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Again, another sign to Jews. They still don't get it. And when they were gone over, they came unto the land of the Gennes Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. So again, here comes the mass of the people. You can't get out away from the mass of the people. And I'm looking back here. He was here before, I'm just trying to find it. Um, maybe not. That's there. That was the guy who was in. But he wasn't there. This is another city. So the word has gotten out. It's gotten to Herod. It's getting to the towns that when Jesus shows up, here he is. And they start bringing people to him. Ambulatory. Ambulance to Jesus. 
and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. Now, where did they get that from? So the word's getting out. You didn't need media. You didn't need television news. Word got out. Just as much it gets out in 2016. Word got out. And you know what the word got out? That Jesus can take care of you when he comes to your town. What's the word today in America when, when we bring Jesus to the public? Get out of here. Shut up. Too loud. No love. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And many, as many touched, were made perfect. They're just touching him. The faith. If, if I heard this woman can do it, I believe I can do it. That's the one that can do it. No one else. And that's faith again. 